first of all, thank you guys for coming out. Obviously, we have a, a, a pretty big crowd, um, which I love. Uh, my name is Captain Mike Abel. I'm the manager of the shop here. been here for, well, yeah, pretty much since I was born. You're right on point about that, yeah. I used to hide in the back office and I was shy and bashful and still am. Um, but I'm going to talk to you guys about throwing topwater plugs for redfish and trout. Uh, how many of you guys in this room have ever done it for a caught fish? So a few, maybe half. Um, for those of you that have not, I want to show you this quick video. Hopefully, I know it's small, um, but hopefully you guys can see it. Um, this is something that and it's, I know it's going to be tough to see. But this is actually a speckled sea trout. Be, it's hard to follow it, but the plug is back here in the back. Mike, yeah. can you pull that for screen for just a little bit more? There you go. And you'll see this trout explode on this plug. <laughs> <laughs> so that, like that right there is what got me hooked on topwater fishing, right there. Um, one of the cool, it's just one of the coolest bites. I mean, obviously you guys saw that. Um, and you'll see it in various forms, whether it's trout or redfish, bluefish, ladyfish, um, even caught flounder on it. Yeah. So that what, you know, just seeing that right there gets me pumped to go for this coming season. Um, was that at night time or late in the evening? That was late in the evening. Um, <clears throat> which I'll, I'll quickly start out by, um, you can see I don't have a lot of stuff on this table. I got one box, rod and reel, line, leader, and that's it. So it's pretty simple. It's about as simple as it gets, but then it has its technical aspects to it. And that's what I want to help you guys with um, to kind of get you guys in the zone, at least know what, you know, get you an idea of what you're going to do, when to do it, um, and kind of how to do it. Um, so the setup is actually very easy. Uh, and this can, being a, a topwater plug or any type of artificial, this is not going to be a rod that you're going to cast out, let it sit in the rod holder, and let it sit. This, this isn't beer drinking speed right here. This is, you put it in the cup holder and you hold the rod, work the bait. Um, and that's the beauty about doing that with any type of artificial is that you cover ground, you cover territory. So. If I went up the Cooper River past the 526 bridge, which is like going to Africa to me, um, I would end up throwing top, either top water or artificial just to cover more territory to try and figure it out because I don't fish up there. And that is the beauty of throwing artificial in general. Just you cover ground, you can find fish that you had no idea were there. Um, and then if you wanted to go back and fish those later on with like live bait or cut bait on the bottom, if you wanted to. But the thing obviously as you can tell is like this is a visual thing. This is it's not necessarily sight casting to it, but it, the reaction bite to it is visual. So that's what has really got me hooked. Um, the setup that you choose, and it would be wise to try and pick the lightest setup that you can get. Um, this is one of the newest rods that we have at the shop that I started throwing and I love it. The rod weighs three ounces. The real weighs six or whatever it weighs. Um, so it's, just, it's comfortable. It's light, it's small, it's something I can go through artificial with all day and not get worn down. Um, the rod is about seven feet in length and I've loaded it with 10 pound braid. Whether you throw top water or any type of artificial, the lighter the braid, the better it will cast and the farther it will cast. Uh, the only downside to using braid is it's going to be more expensive and if you get a knot in it, it's basically cut it out and retie it to most extent, um, unless you have more patience than I do. Um, that being said, so I've got this with 10 pound braid. I use a lot of, my, fra my favorite braid to use is the spider wire camo braid. Um, there would be many variations in braids. Um, Power Pro, for example, is more of a flat braid. And the, the reason that spider, water, spider wire is a little more expensive is because it's more round, so it will cast better and less likely to get wind knots and things like that, so it's less aggravating. Um, even though Power Pro is a great line, I just, I got hooked on spider wire, I've been using it, and yada yada. 
Um, so from that 10 pound camera braid or whatever braid you have, you're going to want to take and attach a leader. And I do not, I, I say I try not to put anything in between such as a swivel or anything like that. I try and just tie it. Um, this is a uni knot, which I'll be happy to show you guys later if you don't know how to tie it, um, to connect that to my 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, and I'll cover a couple things and it'll make more sense as I continue talking. Um, I know one question that will come up is do you tie a braid straight to the plug? Yes, you can, but the biggest downfall of that is if you get that braid wrapped in these little split rings on the plug, it will basically be you got to cut it and then retie. Just for the fact that this braid is more limp than this 20 pound fluorocarbon. So that 20 pound fluorocarbon, if it gets wrapped around the hooks and things like that, it's more likely to come out versus the braid in line. Does anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, can you tie a polymer knot with that braid? Um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure, but I... Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, can you? Oh, man, you should be teaching. Um, but so, yeah, I guess you can. But I just find what's, what knot is comfortable for you, and I would stick with it. As long as it holds, you pull on it, it's tight, go with it. Yeah. How long is the leader? You know, it doesn't have to be very long. I would say you would want to make it to where, I always try and make it a length where if you wind that knot up to the tip, that your lure is not three or four, you know, too terribly long. Because I try not, although you can, I try not to wind that knot through the guides. Because it's just one, it'll slow it down basically. Yes, it's gonna go through your rod, but you can hear it and it'll just slow your plug down. So you might lose a couple feet um, by doing that. So I just. I would say on average two feet. You know, it's it's it'd probably be better just to make it a hair longer than that way if you need to, you can keep cutting it back and that way you don't have to tie a whole another section to it. Um, but that's why I mean I love it. It's, it's simple. You know, it's basically tying your braids, a short leader, your plug, and your golden. I say that, and so I guess getting back to now that we've got this top water plug, when do we go do it? That would be probably the biggest, biggest uh, question. Um, I would say as a whole, and it'll depend from year to year, but I would say mid to late April on into maybe December, somewhere in there. Um, I never say never, so <coughs> if you went through it tomorrow and caught fish on it, on a topwater plug, I would not be surprised. I would be a little hesitant just because of the water temperature. They're not, the fish are not as active as they are later on in the year, especially to come up on the surface versus when they're down deeper because of the water temperature being colder. Um, so I would, I would kind of give it a, a rule of thumb as maybe like 62, 63 and up um, as far as water temperature, when to start maybe throwing top water to get a more active bite. Um, so that being said, you've got you know basically April through December kind of time frame. The other thing that will really play into effect of throwing top water is time of day. So these fish, a lot of times, like going back to never say never, not always, but I'd say a majority of your bite would be either first thing in the morning or late in the afternoon or on an overcast day. So a lot of days when it's pouring down rain and stuff like that and everybody's like, oh, I should stay home, that would be a really good day to go throw top water plugs because it's overcast besides getting soaking wet. Um, and when I say early, I mean daylight. Usually a lot of times like when the sun, you know, say we're in June and the sun comes up at say six o'clock or whatever, I would probably be where I want to be fishing at 5.30 at the latest. More times than not that bite, you will kind of tell that the bite as the sun comes up will start to slow down. Um, you know, seven, 7.30, that bite might slow down. It might continue on, um, but I'd say as a whole, 7, 7.30, it usually slows down, especially on your trout, or so I found. Usually up in the middle of the day, they don't hit it. Um, now, granted, I've caught, I've caught my, saying that, I caught my biggest trout at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a little overcast, um, but I'd say as, as a general rule, especially start out first thing in the morning, late in the afternoon, overcast days, be perfect. That fish that you guys saw, um, I think we did that. I mean, it was the last, you could tell. I mean, it was dark, that's why it's so hard to see. It was probably the last 
15, 20 minutes of daylight, and you can barely see your plug. And a lot of times in the morning time when I'm um, fishing, before the sun starts even to come up, I can't even see my plug. All I can do is feel it, you know, if I'm getting a hit. Uh, anybody got any questions so far? Any tide preference? No, not really. I mean, I, I would, uh, the one thing I have to say really about tide preference, I would look at two things, uh, maybe a couple more than that. But the first being, on your, usually around your full moon and your new moon, that's when you have your most extreme tide. That's when the water is up in the road in some places, or when it's dry as a desert in some places and people are getting stuck. Um, those would probably be not, not so much my favorite tides, especially in the middle of it, because you have our average tide here is about five and a half feet. So if you had a 6.6 .6 high tide and then a negative 0.8 high tide, you know, you're looking at seven feet of water in that same six hour span versus you do. So those wouldn't be my ideal. <coughs> on those tides, I would try and do that around the slack tide. The last two hours of incoming, outgoing, same kind of deal. Um, the other thing is really like, it would go more geared towards like what you're trying to catch. Um, a lot of times I'm not really catching trout in a foot of water, two foot of water. Those would mostly be your redfish yeah, really um, in that shallow water. So other than that, not really. I mean, you just want some tide movement for the most part. Um, would be the biggest thing. Um, you say you catch trout in a deeper water than two foot deep. In most cases, most cases or more. Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go uh, throw top water in a place where it's maybe like 20, 25 feet deep. That's oh, yeah, yeah, probably yeah, pushing yeah. it a little yeah, bit too I'm much. Not, I'm, yeah, I'm not, so I, I would look for places, you know, little drop-offs and ledges, things like that. You could either find it, your depth finder, or like if you're using an anchor and dragging along, you know, hey, you know, I stuck it in here. The anchor, it's 10 feet here, roughly. The next one, yeah, it's 25. I should know maybe next time, like cast past that ledge where it was 10 feet and drag it across that 25 foot ledge where it drops off. Sometimes those trout will hang on that ledge where the bait will flush over. So that, you know, I'll just keep that in mind. Just keep it up here, write it down in your book, you know, whatever you need to do to uh, memorize it. So you're not throwing toward the shore then, you're looking for ledges? Not necessarily. I mean, you can, you'll have both, like, you know, come into play. I always. Everybody who fishes from a boat casts towards land. Everybody who's fishing from land casts a farm. <laughs> so what do we do? We're all hoes. Fish lengths are going to be more or less in front of the boat. What I always do, like if I were pulling up to the bank, let's see. Some of y'all might know where the spot is. Where are the coordinates of that spot? <laughs> Yeah, that part right here. Um, that's actually in Bearsford Creek. That's one of my first, that was probably my like go-to um, for top water. The reason being is this actually, there's a little ledge that kind of comes out underwater down here. All this bank is pretty shallow, but obviously Bearsford Creek is pretty deep. Um, so the way I would actually position myself, you know, first based upon tide. So if we had a tide coming in like this, if I had a trolling motor, I just kind of, or, or not really, just get myself set up where I maybe park my boat here. I could cast my plug all the way over here, work it all on that side of the ledge, across that, um, not plateau, but shallower spot, and then back on this deeper spot. Um, and if I didn't do any good, you know, just blind casting. That's all I'm doing, <coughs> is you just blind casting. Um, and that's how you, that's the beauty about it, like, you know, Came across that spot. I could go somewhere and hopefully be productive. Uh, whether know whether to go there again or not, kind of deal uh, with top water. <coughs> I basically just position myself where I'm in casting distance of the bank. Uh, and I would try and cast right up towards the edge because, especially like if the if it were you know say a dead low tide, the first part of the incoming, all those redfish should be bunched up as close in as they would be. The trout might not be, but the redfish. So, you know, the farther you cast every time, the more area you're covering, the better off you are. Um, you know, we always say in like fly cast and everybody's doing all these false casts. The more time you spend to, doing that, the less time it's in the water. So keep it in the water, you know, keep casting. 
So you yeah, taking it back towards shore? I didn't. I couldn't see the video, or you just pulled it straight, or what are you doing? That was actually that was coming back straight at me because we were sitting at the mouth of a creek, basically, and the tide was. I think it was coming out. I can't remember, um, but it was coming straight back to us. So I was just bombing it as far as I could, and just walking it. And they were. <clears throat> I had several blowups in that spot and missed all of them. It was terrible. Like, that sucked. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was just a little creek coming out, and, um, but it was a you know it was a blast. Um, the one thing I will cover briefly while I've got this diagram up here um, is when you work an artificial plug, you always want to keep tension on it. If you have a ton of slack in it, you can either miss the bite, never know it even happened, um, things like that. So if you do get yourself set up and the tide is coming this way, you're never, you're never going to want to cast if you have the boat here. Looks like a house. You're all, and the tide's moving this way, you're never going to want to cast straight behind the boat. Reason being is, especially if you've got a plug that was sinking and the tide's moving that way, it's not going to get down where you want it to go. Um, so you always, I always, whatever degree this would be, I would cast at that angle and let it, as it moves with the tide, let it come down with the tide. Whether it's a sinking plug or a topwater plug, either one. But you just want to take and keep <coughs> keep your line taut. Um, especially with these topwater plugs, for example, that are going to be on the surface. You will get a bow in your line. And you want to keep that, try and keep that bow out of there as best you can because that's a ton of slack that you might not, you might be missing the bite and not even know it. You're always going to want to take and cast it up current at an angle. If you cast it straight up current, it's just going to come right back to you, especially the tides hauling butt. It's just going to be a, a lot of casting into it coming right back to you. So you're not going to get the amount of time that you'd be able to work a plug is if you cast it at an angle. And that goes for this side or casting it out deeper, either one. You know, you just, I would never cast it straight up or straight back, uh, you know, unless circumstances were just different and there's 500 redfish up here and you got to do it like don't listen to what I said. <laughs> Did you look for any particular bottom? Rough Good. bottom, a tangy bottom, a tail, or what? Um, Is there anything that's there? You just fish it. See if you fish in there? Pretty much. I mean, you know, like okay. that particular spot is it's not real, it's not sandy bottom. I mean, I can take my push pole and shove it in the mud there. Um, but I've had places where it's, it's completely, I've done sure. both basically. I don't find like a huge correlation of one or the other. Uh, so fly to kayak fishing as well? So you don't want to be right on would. top of anything because you're trying to you cover would, distance, right? You would try not to. I know, like, I don't have a, a vast experience in kayak. I know it's just hard to, like, even maneuver the kayak, keep it in one spot, and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you were, if the kayak wasn't stationary and you were drifting, you could still continue to do that. But, um, or even if you did manage to anchor it, I was still kind of trying to do the same thing, especially if you have like a really strong running current. That's where you'll really notice it. Either casting straight up dead into the current, which is going to come right back to you extremely fast. And if you cast behind, you know, down current, anything's not going to get down. Your plug preference? Any plug preference? Well, I was getting ready to start on that, so we've been talking a lot about, um, a lot about. Well, we do this Yep. If that upper feed were a marsh creek feeding into a larger creek and not going to You know where I'm fishing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that day. <laughs> you don't have a pool in, in there. Some of them do is that you drop a three or four feet down to the trail. Well, that's kind of what that does right there. And that's what I fish, basically. Is, you know, this might be four or five, six feet deep, and this is 10 or 12, and this is, you know, 10 or 12 just on this side, and it comes out to 25 down here in the middle. But I fish that. Um, there's not really, I don't want to say there's like a whole lot of science to it. I mean, because I can take, um, you know, you can go, if you went out of this creek and to the right or even to the left, like those places are really shallow. I mean, you can fish them on a low tide, even a high tide, it's probably four or five feet deep. So you could still go through a top water in there and do that. Um, I guess let's cover real quick um, on plugs because. Working the plugs and picking different plugs uh, will be a huge thing. I was talking to you guys and girls um, about covering territory, and we've been talking about topwater plugs. 
This is your top water plug. This is going to be right on the surface, just as you saw in the video. Um, that's why this is a visual thing. That's what makes me addicted to it. Um, and you'll have different plugs that will be worked different ways. Um, so you've got here. I've got a popper, which that would be. You know, one of the easiest ways to start out with, if you guys wanted to start out with. Um, matter of fact, I'll tell this real quick. I, um, shame on me, but I took a husband and wife fishing uh, one morning. We threw, went through top water. Me being Mr. Negative, I thought that the um, wife, I'm sorry ladies, would not be able to do it as well as the husband. So I put on a popper on hers and what we call a walk the dog plug with his. It was a complete opposite. He was good and she was awesome. Um, so with the popper, all you're doing is casting it as far as you can and just taking, jerking the rod and popping it, just kind of chugging it. Um, and you can vary it. Um, it doesn't have to be any, you can pop it once, let it sit, pop it three times, let it sit. You can kind of change that up. The reason that I don't, you know, and me being Mr. Negative, I thought she couldn't do it. Well, she caught the first, like, half a dozen fish on this popper, <laughs> and he was back there struggling in the back of the hood with this one. Um, and this is, this is going to be a little bit harder to work, um, but when I say they call it walk the dog, I don't know where that came from, but in essence, the plug goes from side to side on the surface. I don't know if you can see it, but it's going, and it has a little cavity in the back that has a ball bearing, so when you pull it, it goes one side, and then you pull it again, it goes to the other. So it clicks, and it goes click, 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 and it walks on the surface like that. Um, but you're not guiding it with the rod at all, it's doing that because the way it's designed? Not at all. So it is, that's where the tricky part is. Um, that's, that's why it's kind of tougher, and that's why I was Mr. Negative at the time. Um, it, it is a little trickier, and I'll show you. I mean, how, like, so the plug, now knowing that the plug doesn't do it by itself, how do you think, if you wanted the plug to go from side to side, like, how do you think you would do it from side to side? But you actually don't. Um, you actually, and it takes very little muscle, you know, movement whatsoever. Um, really, what you're actually going to do is take, and I actually hold the rod, um, fairly loosely in my hands, I don't death grip it or anything. You know, I make my cast as far as I can, and I take an, I always point my rod down towards the water. The reason being is if you hold it up, the wind can take and grab it and move your plug around. Um, so I just, I always hold it down. So what you're actually gonna do is take and push it down, and it's gonna make the plug go to one side. Now you've gotta push it down, push the rod down again to make it go to the other side. So what you've gotta do is then, push down, reel up that little bit of slack, and then push it down again. So basically like rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time. So that's what makes it difficult. It just kind of, it can be, you know, you can get one down and then maybe not do the other one so right. But you just want to get a steady, you know, a steady rhythm going where it goes click, 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 <clears throat> back and forth. And I actually, what did I do? I took a guy fishing one day and we were riding along actually in that same spot and it was, I think it was like 5.45, 6 o'clock and I was like, hey, you know, have you ever done it? He's like, no, this plug you sold me, you don't catch anything. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I, was like I gotta stop this. So we actually pulled up and I was like, alright, well let me see what you're doing. So he cast. And he started screaming this thing across the surface. I was like, no wonder, dude, a cheetah couldn't even like catch up that thing. It was like hauling butt. Um, so that that's basically just what he's doing. He's just working it all. Um, so we got him, slowed it down to where that thing was just going click, 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 you know, from side to side, and that just changed the game right there. So it really does matter how you work it um, and present it. I've never seen a pilot doing 800 miles an hour, but um, so so that would be a big big. Uh, big deal. Um, so getting back to it and the kind of trouble you just need to work on that rhythm is just push and I kind of lightly hold it here just push down reel, push down reel, push down reel, push down reel. And I actually just take my index finger. It takes so little 
<clears throat> power to move it, I just take and tap it down. Um, and this is where, kind of getting back to having something that's light and not having something that weighs 10 pounds makes it easier on everyone um, to use. And it just, I, I feel like it makes it more enjoyable. Um, but just get in that rhythm, get that plug going from side to side, um, going back and forth. And we can always say, if any of y'all ever want to go down, like Shin Creek or something, I'll go down there with you and we can all do it um, just to see if we're doing it right here. Do you, in your retrieve, do you ever let it pause or let it sit there and then start up again? Or is it constant back and forth kind of motion? Well, that's where you guys can actually um, change it up. Um, I've had a lot of times where I'm working it, I'm going to move the trolling motor, slow it down, and there he is, like not even looking at it. Um, so I would, de I would definitely try it. You know, there's not a real rhyme or reason to it. I would say, like, if I'm walking it, you know, and just keep on doing that for a 50 casts and don't get anything blow up on it, I would maybe then start walking it and then slow it down and maybe even stop it. You know, you could even go into trying something different with a different popper. Um, you know, one thing that I'll bring up is you'll have, you'll have different um, plugs that we walk the dog with that will have different pitches to them. They will have different sounds, basically. I haven't really like correlated one with like, you know, it's overcast, it's not raining, I'm gonna go through this one that has this pitch and this one with that. So that's really, you guys can kind of toy with it. Yeah. You know, there's a ton of top water plugs. So I mean, you know, one of my favorites and one of my go-tos would be this little Super Spook Junior. I like that one because it's light you know, if I'm going to go through it for redfish in shallow water, it's not clunking right on top of them real loud with a bigger plug. I mean, you can you can go throw stuff like that, like that big. A trout would hit that. You'd be surprised. So, yes, um, on the top <coughs> part, like how fast is fast or what's too slow? I don't. <clears throat> well, I mean, like you said, don't scream it across the water. I feel like it needs to just barely be touching it or something. Well, you just want it, you'll hear that ball bearing in there when it goes click. So you basically just want it to go click, click, click. On the popper, it'll do that? It will do that on all these top waters. Like if I fold these hooks, you can hear it in uh, there. Okay. So whenever you take and walk it in the water, you'll hear it go click, click, click. You'll physically hear it, or physically. Um, you'll hear it. So you want to hear it flipping? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you can take, as far as like getting back to working that plug, you'll, um, you can do a couple things. Like if you notice that it's, it's going, it's walking too much and not really hearing the clicking, it's just going side to side real fast, it's probably, you're probably just reeling too much. Um, so that's just, you'll just have to kind of make small adjustments to it. I mean, it should really be like push it down turn maybe like a half turn or so to because when you push it down you created a little bit of slack and so in order to turn around and push it back down you've got to pick up that slack on the reel so that's where you push it down <laughs> turn the handle three quarters away and then push it back down and so you just get in this little rhythm and it should just be going from side to side that's why it's tricky i mean you know i've had a lot of guys that get on the boat <coughs> a lot of guys that have come with me twice and the second time he still hasn't picked it up um, which is okay. I mean, it, it's just it kind of is abnormal. I mean, you know, a, have you ever tried anything like rooster tails? Um, as far as just like with a treble hook and stuff, and like buzzing them across the surface. Yeah, well, for a redfish. I haven't. I mean, they'll they'll definitely. I would say like some of the uh, like redfish magic and stuff would work. Um, whenever I think of like a rooster tail, I'm always thinking like freshwater stuff. They're kind of small. Um, so I, ha I honestly I haven't. I haven't tried them. Anybody have any questions so far? Oh. Uh, wide glide from Larry Goldberg. Anybody ever tried one of them? What is it like? It's a little wide glide that basically does a big wider pattern. Oh, okay. Is there a scoops or something? Right, right, right. Now, I, I, I have seen what you're talking about. I haven't used them no, quite yet. Yeah, but I would definitely say, like, just because I'm using these doesn't mean that's the only thing to use. So, you know, by all means, like, if you have something else, just try it. Won't hurt anybody for sure. Did you ever use a top water with a spinner on the back? You know, I haven't. I haven't. They make um, a noise too, right? You'd want to take in, you'd want to watch what you, and I'll, 
this kind of pings back to what I was saying about we putting anything in here. Because you kind of want to watch. They have that plug balanced out, um, you know, to a T, basically. So you could take, if you, you know, went back and say one of the hooks started rusting or it broke, and you want to put another hook on there, if you put too big a hook on it, it'll throw the balance of it off and just won't work right. So that's why I don't really put a blade on it. The other thing, I guess, before I forget, excuse me, um, I, I try not to. It's not going to kill anybody, but if you put a swivel in here, um, it will take, when you go to work that plug, it will pull on that swivel first versus the plug. So I, I try not to put a swivel in there. Granted, if you have to, by all means do it, the plug's still going to work. Um, but I just try not to. It's just less tackle. It's something that's not really extremely necessary. Uh, you don't have to. So you got, they're kind of covered real quick, like the walk the dog plugs that have different pitches in there. You know, like the Rappalas will have different pitch. Uh, Mira Lure makes several plugs that have different pitches. This is called a top puff. They have a sh what they call a she dog, which will have a, a different pitch to it. Most of them do. I would say probably, I don't know, 90% of the ones we have downstairs pretty much all have. Um, all have that little ball bearing in there. If you look, when we go downstairs, I'll show you in that super spook, they make a clear one so you can actually see what it looks like. That's how I know. I got open it up and check it out. Um, the only couple other things I would throw out there is like on these super spook juniors, this being a lighter plug, it's great to go throw for redfish and trout. <clears throat> and it is one of my usually most used plug. Um, I have had days where I take like a badonka donk, call it badonka donk. <laughs> <laughs> um, the beauty about this plug is it does have a different pitch which I like. I've had a few days where I'm throwing this and the guy on the back of the boat's throwing this and just having a few more blow ups. So that, you know, might be, you go out with a buddy, y'all throw different things to try it out. The biggest thing that I know I'm going to use this a lot, you know, a lot of times if I go try a redfish. The reason being, this plug is a little bit lighter. I went, and I'm ashamed to say, like one day, and went <coughs> one for 12 or something like that on redfish. <coughs> And reason being is like you can see how that trout <coughs> exploded on that topwater plug. Well, a redfish, if you look at a redfish, it has that underslung mouth. So when it comes up to hit a topwater plug, it's, the odds are, are tough. Um, and that's why, honestly, the odds in, in topwater fishing and the ratio can be a little bit tougher. But I'd rather go catch like three fish personally on topwater than go, go catch 15 on bait. Like it's just so fun to see. So getting back to this plug, this one's just a little bit lighter, and these badonka donks will sit a little lower in the water, so you might get a little better hookup ratio from these. That doesn't always happen, um, but it's just something that you might at least throw in the tackle box. So if you go and you're missing them left and right on this, switch over to that different plug. It's still a topwater plug, it just sits a hair lower than those super spooks. Um, <coughs> Yeah, sure. The rear treble hook, did you ever switch that out just like a regular hook? I haven't. Um, there, you know, there's a guy actually out of New Jersey who sent me some cedar plugs or whatever, and like he had just one hook on the back, and I've thrown it a couple times, but just never, uh, never really done anything with it. So, I mean, for all means, like, good try. Sometimes I have a hard enough time picking one of the treble hook in the back. So yeah. <laughs> why, why switch out from three to one? But yeah, so when you have your leader, are you cinching that knot up to the? Why are you tying a kind of a loose knot? I'm not, and that's a good question. Uh, on a lot of your plugs, you don't have. You just have <coughs> an eye up front. Um, <coughs> now getting back, it's not going to hurt anything if you tie a knot straight down to it. Um, but I always, on all my artificials, I tie a loop knot. Then that way it has even more room to kind of swivel and it's free you know, to do what it's supposed to do. And I can show you guys that. I, I tie a what call a little figure eight loop knot. You know, if you have one that's used, by all means, do it. Um, you can tie a cinch knot on there if you wanted to. That just The cinch knot, whenever you hook a big enough trout or redfish, it just cinches down 
on the plug, and I'll show you what it looks like. But then you just, in order to get that loop back in there, you got to turn around and retie it. So I just tie a knot that will stay. You can pretty much use it the whole time. Did you catch more fish with the uh, current move instead of dead low or dead? Usually, you definitely want the current to be moving. Uh, I would say on those really extreme tides, the closer to slack would probably be your more productive, just because you have <clears throat> almost way too much current moving. You know, if you went in the middle of that tide, you know, our tides change every six hours. So if you went in the three hour tide in the middle of that seven foot tide that we had, it would be roaring and it'd be hard to work any type of artificial. That's where, you know, if I were to take somebody fishing, I would probably plan it two hours before slack tide and then fish it to the two hours after and then go do something else and figure something else out. Right, so any questions? Still rolling. Um, <clears throat> real quick, uh, I know I'm forgetting things, but you can always take, um, whenever I go work these plugs and I'm throwing these plugs and I got fish blown up on it and I'm missing them, I've changed everything else and it's not working, <clears throat> one thing I will do is go to doing a mirror dine. This is actually a suspending bait, so this will sink just below the surface. This will take, you know, when you're getting 10 or 15 blow-ups, these trout are blowing up on it, but you're not hooking them, and you will because it's surprising. You've got two treble hooks hanging here, and you wonder how they just hit this plug and didn't get hooked. It baffles me to this day. Uh, I go to doing a little suspending bait. And, you know, of course, you can't see the bite, but it's productive, you know. It'll get fish in the boat, especially if that's what you're trying to do. What was that called? It's called a Mirrodon, like M-I-R-R-O-D-I-N-E. We have them downstairs, and I'll show them to you. <clears throat> I guess one thing I haven't really talked about is we got this plug, and we're working this thing across the surface. <clears throat> so more than likely, we're going to see we're going to see this fish blow up on it <clears throat> one way or another, whether they actually hit it or whatnot, miss it. So I can bet everyone's initial reaction would be, they see this fish coming to hit this plug, let's set the hook. A lot of times that plug then just ends up way behind you or in your buddy's ear or whatnot. Uh, it happens to everybody, it still happens to me with excitement. Um, so try, try and wait until you feel that pressure uh, to really go ahead and drive the hook home. You, know? you, you will have them blow up on it several times and they'll miss it and you can rear back and you know until you really feel that pressure that's when you want to set the hook i found a couple things over the years when you're working that plug a lot of times i'd say a lot of times you'll know whether it was a redfish or trout in most cases and the good thing about it you'll have a lot of, not always but a lot of times you'll have them come back and hit it again which is a nice thing. I, I, had one, I remember one time I had this trout blow up on it probably four times all the way and there's the trout in it from me to you. I could see him staring up at the plug looking at it and like eat it and like it was literally like this far but never hit. He hit it like three, you know, three times farther away from me but never really connected. Um, so definitely keep walking it. What I would suggest if you know it's a trout, what I like to do is when you cast it, you're walking the plug, he blows up on it and misses, and you didn't sling it 20 feet behind the boat, take him, walk it a little faster than you normally would, just for another two or three feet, and then slow it back down to your normal speed. So that fish hits it, misses it, yeah, I then pick it up, go click, 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 and then slow it back down and click. <coughs> a lot of times when you go to slow it back down, that's when they'll hit it again. I do the complete opposite if I think it's a redfish. If I think it's a redfish that has come up to hit it, I will actually stop it. Um, sometimes you have to play with it, but if you're walking it and you see a redfish come up, and they'll come up various ways because, again, their mouth is under slung. So they, they're either going to take and roll upside down and try and suck it off the surface. That's why you'll hook it in the belly sometimes. Or they will take and kind of come up and almost kind of spit at it. It kind of looks like a kitty, like trying to bounce on something. Um, but they'll actually try to come suck it off the surface. So if you're um, walking that plug and they miss it, stop it and let it sit there for a second and then walk it. Um, 
sometimes, you know, I always picture like when I'm doing that and redfish come up and hit it, I just bring them back that time when I was working my trolling motor and I stop it, not even paying attention to it, he hit it and it wasn't even moving. Um, so that's where you guys can take what I've said tonight and go play with it. You know, it's something you guys could, you guys could maybe come teach me, you know, something that you've learned that works better. Particular color. No. <laughs> no, I mean, there's you always have that one where, like, you know, you go to that one in the box that there's 15 different colors, but you go straight to that one. I really don't think color matters. Reason being, if you look at, you know, if you look at the bottom of the plug, that one's white, this one's white, you know, a majority of them are white. Some of them will be different. Um, that would be something I suggest y'all just try. You know, this between this one and this Super Spook Junior, um, and really the speckled trout color that I have. This speckled trout is really one of my favorite colors. Uh, it's a mess, but uh, you know, those two are my favorite colors. But again, color doesn't matter. So that's just one of those things. I just buy this one. So I don't really think it matters one bit. Like I said, I, I think the biggest thing is they pay, especially trout, they hone in on that little clicking noise and they just, I mean, they just will stare at it. Um, they just kind of get in that zone. I think more so the redfish, I don't know if they necessarily hear the plug as much or they concentrate, but I know they can see that weight going across the surface. Um, so I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you guys, like if you haven't tried it, definitely go try it. I mean, it's a blast I and mean, it's one of my favorite things to do. Unfortunately, you can't like go out the night before and then try and get up at 5:30 and go do it. But um, you know, either doing that or your overcast days. Uh, I will say, I guess, kind of in closing, like you know, in the summertime, when in the middle of the day when it's really hot, that's that would be ideal when you're doing it early in the morning, late in the afternoon. I do find, and I've messed with it over the past couple of years, in the fall time you know, say October, November, as it's starting to cool down, if you have a good low tide and those redfish are happy, you can throw top water in the middle of the day. Um, so I would definitely try that. I would just <clears throat> take it and go try it, because uh, this is a ton of fun. I mean, it, it's exciting to see fish blow up on it. You know, you'll have, like I said, bluefish. Last year, I know we caught like a four or five pound flounder on top water. We were in you know, that deep of water, throwing the top water for redfish, and this guy took and never caught anything on top water. The first thing he catches is like a five pound flounder. I'm like, dude, you're doing all right, good job. So, that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah. 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 You definitely can on the floating on the top water plugs. The suspending plugs you can, um, and I do, I do fish these in, in low water, you're just going to have to take and uh, adjust the speed of it because, I mean, this thing with two travel hooks on it in Oyster Bed City is just going to get hung up, so you will have to just kind of work it a little faster. You know, if I knew that I was pulling up to a spot and I'm casting in a foot of water or so, I probably wouldn't even mess with it. Um, you know, I would probably actually choose something different maybe. You know, even though you're working a top water plug and they're not hitting it, maybe go to doing like a jerk shad that's weedless so you don't have to fluster with losing a nine dollar plug and then having to retie it on and all that. I would I would just pick something more appropriate, I guess. That would be a great plug to work in six, seven, eight feet of water or less. Um, you know, until you get and I've worked it and that much, you just gotta work it a little faster and risk getting hung up. Um, is anybody I can show you guys how to tie loop knots or uni to uni knots? Um, you know, anything you got going? Anybody have any questions? Would, would that work? Would these plugs work off Mount Pleasant Pier? Or is that too deep of water? No, no, no. Um, well, the, the only, I would say the downside to it, if it were real windy, is you're so high up off the water. So that would be the only downside to it. To answer your question in general, yes, they would work. I would wait till a little bit later on. And then, if we've had some of the guys that used to work here, he would go down there and fish and catch trout on top water. So I know they would definitely work over there. That's the only downside to it, is just you're higher up. So it might be a little harder to get it to go back and forth. And that goes for most artificials, you know, in general, when you're working them off the pier. So, anybody 
the outside of the coin. Can you illustrate the knots? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll show no, no, it's not. Yeah. It's just well, it's actually two knots, and you actually put them together. Um, is what it is. I'll show you. I mean, I've got the stuff up here to do it, uh, so I'll be happy to show you. Uh, I mean, I've got a little booklet downstairs that I have left for everyone. If they want to take one, you can see it. What's that? Yeah, you can you can all go on. Actually, like that video is on YouTube. Like we have some more videos on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube, click the Pounders Coin. Um, but it's called a Unity Uni. So one thing I, mean, I do want to thank everybody for coming out. If y'all have any questions, y'all are welcome. I'll be hanging out. Um, we're gonna offer y'all a little ten percent discount if you guys need anything. If you want to. Do some plug, pretty much anything in the shop except for guns and ammo. It's ten percent off. <laughs> Those are on short to me. <laughs> What's that? You have ammo? Yeah, yeah, we have it. Uh, you want two, two, three? Because we don't have it. <laughs> That's good. I don't know. It's like a I don't. I always try and um, I always say every year that I'm gonna go like try new places and do it, but I just find myself so busy that I just I don't. A lot of times when I'm not working here, I'm running trips, and I don't want to take somebody to a spot that you know, I don't have any confidence in, or I don't want to be that guy to go run aground and be like, oh, can you help push me off? <laughs> 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 so, yeah. I do a lot of the walk, the uh, lawn down in the waterway. Yeah. I had, we were going down the Keys, and my dad and I, we hopped on a boat, and we were like 20 minutes into it, and this guy like runs aground, like, great, what am I set up for, you know? <laughs> Be that guy. Um, anyways, if anybody wants to go fishing, I do inshore trips where you can take and go through top water um, or anything for that matter. Y'all can take my car and call me anytime, middle of the night, if you want to learn how to tie the knot. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I want to call Wake me up. Call me up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Like, taking the movie, the questions y'all are welcome to. Yeah. I gotta go downstairs and spend some money. Let's get lunch money for the water. You know the old jitterbug? Well, when he first said that, I was kind of thinking about the jitterbug. But I, I would definitely try it if you have one. I'm using the fresh water a lot. Oh, it's worth it. It's worth it. Nothing worthwhile? Yeah. I can't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, there's really no reason it would. I would just, um, you know, maybe just the hooks on it. They're probably fresh water hooks. Just chain them out. Yeah. And that's, you know, I have the hooks. A lot of these are actually replaced hooks, too, because um, the other ones have just rusted out. And you can change the hooks out if you want to go to that extent. Don't forget to uh, change your split rings, too. Yeah, if you, if you think they need it, just go ahead and change those, too. I didn't change mine on these. I just changed the hooks. They're actually sharper hooks than, we're, than what we're calling them. Um, but you can always do that. I mean, it saves you from having to buy it. Another plug, but you can look at this one. I mean, this one, all the paint's coming off of it. You can see where they've hit it. I mean, so it's a ton of fun. I mean, just you guys got to go out and try it. I mean, you know, I agree. We actually had an employee that went today and he was like, Well, I'm gonna go try it. I was like, Okay, and he went, but he didn't do anything on it. You know? But I feel like even if you want to go throw it in the wintertime, you might throw it all day, but when you get that bite, it's gonna be. A big trial, so I would just just try to rake you know, random times. You just never know. I threw that one afternoon at two o'clock. It was a little overcast, and that's how I caught a seven pound trout on top water with it. I mean, it was you know like a 26, 27 inch trout. Like it was a You ever do any top water out in Virginia? Um, no. Yeah, no. I went uh, when we go tarpon fishing and stuff like that. I'll actually take these big plugs and throw them on a bigger rod. I threw them through that in Price's Inlet, but I've always wanted to do that actually, like take my trolling motor and just go down the rocks because you'll have this big red cruise of rocks and all, especially on a calm day. I mean, it would be to see like a 25 pound redfish blow up on this thing. Yeah. I just I haven't I just haven't gotten the chance to really do it. I did it in Price's Inlet when I was tarping fishing and the water was so muddy and they just nothing blew up on it. And it was in the middle of the day. And just, while I was out there. Uh, 